Hello, my name is Ryan from Buster Beagle 3D, and today I'm going to be doing a review of the King Room KLP1 Core XY 3D printer. It's a super fast, cheap, and fully enclosed 3D printer that works with the Clipper firmware. So how does it work? And is it worth the hype over all my other 3D printers running the Marlin firmware? Well, let's find out. First, I wanted to thank King Room for providing me with this machine for my honest review. I also wanted to point out that there are affiliate links in the video description that does help out the channel if you use them, but they do not sway my opinion one way or another. With that out of the way, let's get started. Now, normally I would go over all the specs of this machine, but I'm going to do something a little different with this review, and I'm going to go over the improvements that I made before really working with the machine for too long. It was pretty clear from the beginning that this machine had a great deal of potential with some obvious shortcomings from the start. The first thing that I did with this machine was attach the plexiglass panels. However, the panels that come with this machine are super dark and make it virtually impossible to see your print in progress when using the machine with the doors closed. I honestly don't know why they went with panels that were so dark. So the first thing I did was add LED lights inside the enclosure so I could see what was happening inside. I had some of the self-adhesive lights that I have used on many of my other projects, so I added them inside the machine, and now all of a sudden, I can actually see inside. Now that I could see inside, there was another very obvious flaw that I saw on the inside. The XY gantry is so high in the enclosure that the Bowden tube that the filament runs through rubbed against the top door and made the tube come in at a very unnatural angle. It really seemed like it needed more space above the extruder head so that the filament went in straight. Now, I just happened to have a laser engraver with some plexiglass sitting around, so I designed a riser for the top door to give me some extra space with the print head. I did this on a laser engraver, but later found out that there was already a 3D printable model available to do the same thing, which I'll talk about later. The last major change that I'll talk about before I get into the specs of how I was able to use this machine was the spool holder with the filament runout sensor. The spool holder seems to be way too high on the machine and makes for an unnatural bend in the filament to guide the plastic through the runout sensor. My solution to that was to remix a spool holder I had used before and lower the spool to create a more natural flow to the sensor. The last issue back here that I have not really yet solved is that the Bowden tube that leads to the extruder is not connected to anything. It's really just floating past the sensor. The only issue with that is that if you are feeding the filament into the machine, it's really hard to manually insert the filament since one hand is on the clamp release on the extruder and the other one would have to be on the filament pushing it into the tube. Since the Bowden tube is not attached to anything, it's really hard to push with one hand while holding the clamp with the other. It's still something I'm working on and will probably solve in the future. So after all of those initial changes to the machine, I was finally able to give the machine a fair shot of working correctly. The build area of this machine is 210 by 210 millimeters on the XY and 210 millimeters on the Z or height. The machine comes with a direct drive extruder and an all metal hot end. Like I was saying before, the machine comes fully enclosed in a coated steel frame that really adds some weight and rigidity to the machine. The enclosure also allows for different materials such as ABS and PETG and other high temp plastics that require the space to remain hot to aid with the parts sticking to the plate as well as with layer separation. The X and Y gantries run on linear rails for a nice smooth movement which is super important at the fast speeds that this machine can operate at. The machine can print at a blazing 500 millimeters per second However, the quality could potentially suffer at those speeds, but even going at half of that speed, it would still be more than twice as fast as the other 3D printers I currently run. The gantry does not lower, but stays at the same height, and it's the bed that moves up and down during printing. This also allows for the super fast print speeds. The bed is equipped with a removable textured spring steel plate that makes part removal super fast and easy. You just remove the plate, give it a little flex, and the part easily pops off. 
The machine also has a sensor to perform the auto bed leveling procedures with the machine. There is no manual leveling other than the first measurement to record the nozzle offset with a piece of paper. After that, the printer does the rest and you should be set up to print. The printer is also equipped with a 3.5 inch touchscreen that controls the machine, but it can also be controlled through Wi-Fi on your PC or through your phone. Also, the screen displays a lot of data and it's pretty small, so it might be hard to do much of the work with your fingers. So the machine comes with a pen, which makes the task a little easier. Honestly, I did much of the testing and work with this machine through the web interface, which was super easy to set up and use. Now, this is my first machine using the Clipper firmware. It's different from every other 3D printer that I have used in the past, which were all using the Marlin firmware. It seems like a much more powerful but potentially daunting system to those just getting into the hobby. The directions that came from the company were fairly straightforward on setting up the machine. At times, it was slightly confusing because they go through the setup through the web interface and the touchscreen at the same time, but you only need to do it through one of them. It goes over setting up the Wi-Fi, leveling your build plate, and loading the filament. You then run through something called a vibration compensation that helps the machine print at a better quality during the fast operation speeds. You then run a test for something called a pressure advance that again gives you values to enter into your printer configuration files to help calibrate the extruder. After that, you're ready to go. The first thing I printed on the machine was the Benchy model that came preloaded onto the machine. I printed the model first at the fast speed that took about 35 minutes, but turned out pretty decent. I ran it again at what they called violent speed, and it still did a pretty good job, but this time took 28 minutes. It's not breaking any speed records, but it still did a decent job. There was a little bit of drooping happening, but overall not bad for something printed that fast. After that, I wanted to try the printer again on some prints that I do all of the time on my other machines. The printer comes with Cura on the zip drive, and since that is what I use on all of my other machines, I loaded up the profile that came with the machine and tried to print, but everything failed pretty bad. I just couldn't seem to adjust the profile properly to get good printing using Cura. Now, I was able to successfully print those benches, so I opened the G-code files to see how they were made, and I noticed that they were sliced in something called Orca Slicer. I've never used Orca Slicer, but I thought it was worth a shot, so I set up the software and also found some printer profiles for the machine online for Orca Slicer. I was then able to print my models on the KLP-1 successfully. Now, this model is to my injection molding machine, so I print it all the time. On my original 3D printer, this model prints in 5 hours. On my newer 3D printers that I have reviewed in the past on this channel, this model prints in 4 hours and 16 minutes. I ran the same model on the KLP-1 and it printed in 2 hours and 18 minutes, almost twice as fast. However, looking at the model, I there did seem to be some issues with the model not printing correctly. You can see some drooping and scarring on the edges of the print. What I came to realize is that with the doors closed for PLA, the enclosure is just too hot. The cooling fan on the print head is not sufficient to cool the prints as fast as it needs to be at those speeds. You can really see that here. On this print, I started with the doors closed. As soon as I open the top of the machine to let the heat escape, you can clearly see an immediate improvement in the print quality. Especially with PLA, you should probably keep the doors open to allow some of that heat to escape. After printing the PLA with the doors open, I was able to print a very nice and clean version of this enclosure at 2 hours and 21 minutes, and everything looks pretty nice. There is a little bit of stringing that I could probably adjust in the settings to fix, but it's really not that bad, especially at almost half the time of my normal 3D print. With the printer now functioning correctly, I decided to, since the holidays are coming up, print this little Grinch ornament. I printed it in crimson 3D printer filament that I had not used before and was extremely happy with the results. I printed this little statue in 2 hours and 49 minutes and was very pleased with the outcome. 
Now, since this is not a multicolor printer, I then painted the rest to complete the job. I really like this filament, so I printed this rugged box that I also found online. Again, the printer did an amazing job of making this box. It turned out very nice and smooth, and I made all the parts for this box in about four and a half hours, which is still pretty fast for a large flat surface areas like these. Next, since my kids really like the small Grinch so much, I decided to print a very large one to see how this printer worked with long print times. I also wanted a Grinch to have some legs, so I modeled some up really quick in ZBrush so the body would have something to stand on. I also broke the body into two pieces so I would be able to make the model even bigger. The body of this print took 8 hours and 17 minutes to print and really came out nice and smooth. Again, this is printed with the top of the machine open to aid with the cooling. The head of the Grinch was printed with supports and took 12 hours and 38 minutes. Just to put that in perspective, this same model on the second fastest printer I have would have taken at least one day and 10 hours. So 12 hours seems like a lot, but it really isn't for that size. For the bottom of the model, I decided to print it in white to help with the painting so I swapped out the filament and printed the base, which used up almost the entire build plate, which also took 10 hours and 37 minutes to print. All three sections came out great. I started painting and then used a 3D printing pen on the seam between the head and the body. I strategically left the seam and the ruffles on the neck, which essentially disappeared after painting. With everything put together, this might be one of my longest and largest 3D prints ever, at just about two feet tall. It is also probably my favorite 3D print ever and will definitely hold an honored place at our Christmas decorations for years to come. Shout out to Dreamstarter over on Thingiverse and Printables for the amazing model and I will link to it in the description. I also ended up printing some for my kids so they could paint them on their own. They had a lot of fun with it and it's something that I really want to keep around to remind me of the holidays. I also printed some more models with the machine that I use every day, like these feet that I sell for laser engraver on eBay. And again, it printed out very nice at over twice the speed that I normally do. I also wanted to add a camera into the enclosure to keep an eye on the printer. So I made a little mount for the camera and then attached it to my frame with a magnet. I also found another file online that should help with the part cooling fan on the machine to get some air behind the nozzle as well. I printed the part but have not tried it yet on the machine, but plan to in the near future. There were a few other odds and ends that I have printed on the machine, but that was it for the most part. Now there are a few other things to mention about this machine. There is a website that I found called klp1.com that has additional information and a few fixes for the machine. First, it has the printer profiles that I was talking about before for the Orca Slicer that you can download and use for the machine. They still might need to be slightly tweaked to work as you would want, but they were a decent starting point. There, you can also find some videos on troubleshooting and maintenance of the machine. Below that is a section to help with some of the known issues with the machine that I did utilize. First was some code to adjust the part cooling fan to run with variable speeds. I always ran at full blast when I was using PLA, so I didn't add this code yet. The one that I did implement, however, is the code for the loud motherboard fan. When you first turn on the machine, the first thing you will notice is how loud the machine is. It's far more loud than my other 3D printers, and that is in part due to the motherboard fan that was working at 100% power from the beginning. There is code that you can add to your printer configuration file that will only turn on the fan when it's needed to keep that noise level down. Another source of the loudness on the machine is the part cooling fan. It is a 5015 radial fan that is not quiet, especially with the doors open to the machine. And finally, there is code to fix the date and time that comes preloaded onto the printer. This code is a little harder to implement since you seem to have to load it with a special terminal called PuTTY that you have to hook up through your machine through the network SSH client. Now, 
if what I just said doesn't make sense, then you are not alone. It really doesn't make sense to me either, and I'm not even sure that I said it right. This all leads me to my first thought on this machine. While the Clipper firmware is amazing and allows for super fast 3D printing and can be super customized, it might not be the best choice for everyone wanting to get into 3D printing. I have been 3D printing for years, and this is my first Clipper printer, so even I had a bit of a learning curve on learning how to do everything, and I'm really only scratching the surface. It's also not my first time having to adjust firmware, but again, to the average person who just wants to be able to plug in the machine and print, this might be a more involved process than you're looking for. I also think that at the very least, the lighting, the top door extension, and the spool holder adjustments are pretty necessary. After I had already made my own, I found that KLP1 website where you can download models that someone else has already shared for things like the spool holder and the printable door riser. It's also where I found that new part cooling fan that I plan to try out soon. Again, this is a nice printer and can become an amazing 3D printer if you're willing to tinker with it to tune it just right. It will still take me a little bit to update the machine to become my everyday use printer. Like I had mentioned before, I have already attached a camera on the inside enclosure and have some ideas for a future improvement. If speed is important to you and you don't mind tinkering, then this might very well be the machine for you. At under 400 for a machine of this build quality, I've not really seen anything comparable right now. Again, while not perfect, it truly is a step in the right direction for 3D printing and makes me pretty excited of how far these machines have come since I first started 3D printing years ago. I wanted to once again thank King Rune for providing me with this machine for my honest assessment of it, and if you decide to pick up one, there again is an affiliate link in the description that does help out the channel. Thanks again for watching. If you like this video, please do give it a thumbs up, perhaps drop a comment, and consider subscribing for more content having to do with 3D printers, laser engraving, injection molding, and all things Maker. Thanks again, stay safe, and we'll see you next time.